Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan was born on November 2nd, 1877. He was actually born in the city of Karachi, right over here on this map, Karachi. Um, and at that time, uh, Karachi actually was not part of Pakistan like it's today. It was at, under British rule at that time. Um, and he was actually born to uh, Aga Khan II and his third wife, Nawab Aliya Shamsul Muluk, uh, who was at that time the granddaughter of the Iran Fatali Shah of Persia. Now, a few interesting moments uh, in his life. Let's uh, list those out. So first, on August 17th, August 17th, 1885, uh, at the age, he was actually seven years, nine months, and 16 days old. He succeeded his father as the 48th, 48th hereditary imam of the Shia Imami Ismaili Muslims. All right, and he left quite an illustrious life after that. I'm just going to give a few highlights of his life uh, from that point onward. Uh, so in 1906, in 1906, Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan became the founding member of the All India Muslim League, the All India Muslim League. Okay, the All India Muslim League basically was a political party that pushed for the um, independence of a Muslim state or, or trying to come up with an independent Muslim state. At that time, uh, really, India was kind of this one monolithic country uh, and it had been under British rule. And the All India Muslim League wanted a separate Muslim state, and, and this was to be established in the northwest part of India, this territory right here, and obviously this is what uh, eventually became known as Pakistan. All right, uh, in 1908, uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah married uh, a woman by the name of uh, Cleope Teresa Magliano, and uh, they actually uh, had two sons. The first was uh, Prince Giuseppe Mehdi Khan, who was born, uh, actually he died in February 1911, he actually died after a year of life, and then also Prince Ali Solomon Khan, uh, who uh, lived from 1911 until 1960, and through uh, Prince Ali Solomon Khan, actually, uh, Sultan Mahmud had a grandson named uh, Karim Aga Khan, and, and uh, Karim Aga Khan subsequently became the, the 49th Imam of the Shia Imami Ismaili Muslims. All right, so uh, he was married in 1908, and he actually had been married several times. I think this was his uh, second marriage in 1908. All right, 1932. Uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah was actually nominated to represent India. He was nominated to represent India uh, in the League of Nations. Nominated to represent India uh, in the League of Nations. Okay, the League of Nations. And interestingly enough, it's just a few years after that, in 1937, in 1937, he was made president of the league. So he made he was made the League of Nations president. Okay, he's made president. All right, and then 1947 was actually another another important year in his life. And actually, 1947 was the year in which uh, Pakistan was founded. 1947, Pakistan was founded as an independent Muslim state, and. Sultan Muhammad Shah was actually the uh, one of the kind of founding fathers of Pakistan. Okay, he played a very important role in Pakistan's formation. Okay, and then in 1957, in fact, on July 11th, 1957, uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan died, uh, and he had actually served um, as Imam of the Shia Imami Ismaili Muslims for 72 years. So 72 years as a mom, that, that's an incredibly long time to be um, a, a leader of that sort in, in any capacity. Uh, and it's, it's primarily because he started uh, really young. He was the imam when he was just a little bit under eight years old. And, and really for, for most of his life, he was the, the spiritual uh, leader of that community. And upon his death, when they opened up his will, it said, and I'm going to read it right here, Ever since the time of my ancestor Ali, the first imam, that is to say, over a period of 1,300 years, it has always been the tradition of our family that each imam chooses his successor at his absolute and unfettered discretion from amongst any of his descendants, whether they be sons or remote male issue. And in these circumstances, and in view of the fundamentally altered conditions in the world in very recent years, due to the great changes which have taken place 
including the discoveries of atomic science, I am convinced that it is in the best interest of the Shia Muslim Ismailia community that I should be succeeded by a young man who has been brought up and developed during recent years and in the midst of the new age and who brings a new outlook on life to his office as Imam. For these reasons, I appoint my grandson Karim, the son of my own son Ali Salomon Khan, to succeed to the title of Aga Khan and to the Imam and peer of all Shia Ismailian followers. And this was actually a pretty big deal. I think people had been expecting that, that Sultan Muhammad Shah was going to appoint or, or confer the Imamat onto one of his sons. And he, he had two sons at that time, but instead he skipped a generation and conferred the Imamat onto his grandson, uh, Prince Karim Aga Khan. And I want to read one more quote about Sultan Muhammad Shah. I think overall he's, been, he's a very fascinating individual. I think he's very intellectually motivated, and he said as a child in his memoir, he said, quote, as a child, I was very much interested in philosophy and poetry, because anyone who knows Persian literature is naturally inclined to those subjects by the wonderful power, charm, and grace of our Persian poets. I came under the influence of Hafiz, Molana Rumi, and others at an early age and impressionable age, and they opened my eyes to the wonders of the universe and the need of constantly being or constantly keeping abreast of scientific and philosophic speculation and discovery. I have never since lost my interest in these subjects and have tried as far as one can in the midst of a busy life to read all the most recent theories and the arguments on which they are founded. So he clearly was a highly intellectual individual. He was very well read and he, and he studied not just religion and poetry, but also the sciences and, and really was a very well-rounded individual overall. And I want to just read one last quote. This is taken from the Institute of Ismaili Studies website. And basically it says that Sir Sultan Muhammad Shah was a social reformer whose concerns included the alleviation of rural poverty and the upliftment of women in society. An advocate of modern education, he became an ardent supporter of male and female educational advancement in India and East Africa. A keen connoisseur of culture, he advocated a truly multicultural education, blending the best and highest of Western and Eastern literary classics. He was a champion of enmity between nations and people.